Um, when did you decide to start interviewing people? Because you've done a couple of interviews now. Yeah. I think Cabacious D was a recent one. Yeah, kind of yeah. Going, Here's an amazing trans or queer person. Look at them. Look yeah, at their yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think part of it was it was around um, the Pride. Auckland had a Pride festival this year, and they they've kind of this is the first time in a in quite a while that they've really had a festival for Pride. Usually, it's just big gay out where it's just one day. Um, and I thought oh, I really want to make space for the the queerer side of LGBT stuff. So not just a focus on kind of white, middle-class, lesbian and gay men and women, but have kind of queer, genderqueer, trans, polyamory stuff going on. And so I've just started to do a bunch of videos. And part of it is because I used to make little videos um, when I was when I was in uni and I thought oh, I know how to do all this stuff so it's easy just to kind of plug it in and go and part of it was to part of it was to show off people who I really like and comics can only kind of show you so much but if you do a 10 minute interview then it can kind of mm -hmm. sit there for a while and I had um I had done a video that got a few a few um views in it where someone had inter interviewed me for the Regeneration Foundation and t I talked about why I like telling stories and people seemed to, to respond to that. So I thought I, I would do a bunch of interviews with other people. Yeah. So it's kind of like a once every couple of months I want to <laughs> add, add an extra interview where basically I sit on the couch and look awkward and talk awkwardly to someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good fun though, definitely. <laughs> I think it's a it's a good thing to do definitely for visibility because you know it's one thing to make a, a comic and say this is what trans is as a helpful yeah. like 101 for people but it's a completely yeah. different thing to sit curvaceous D down on the couch and say so what is trans to you because yeah. everyone has, like we were saying everyone has their own individual identity and definition thing and so it's important to get that across to have as much of it out there as possible so I'm yeah, glad you're right. contributing to that definitely yeah and I think I think there's so many different ways to be queer and trans and like I can show what my story is and I can show what my story is in relation to Joe, but it's really nice to kind of open that out and give other people space to say, well, what does, what do these words mean to you and to you and kind of keep reiterating that idea that we all do gender and sexuality differently mm. and there's no one particular path that we all go down. Oh, definitely. And and with the comic, it is great having that contrast between yourself and Joe as well. You being the chubby trans guy and Joe being, yeah. uh, as you say, your gentleman partner. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because Joe is also like trans female to, but he's trans femme as well as trans masculine. Yeah. It's, so yeah. I'm trying to find the words. It's not that I'm confused by it. I just, there's, there's so many words out there. It's the problem. I, I think I think with Joe he's much more kind of genderqueer and much more femme identified and kind of is really excited about femme culture and what that means for a trans masculine person and you know I think for me I've always been seen as kind of more butch and like I get really terrified about wearing dresses or skirts or anything and Joe loves dressing up doing drag and <laughs> putting on high heels and wearing makeup and stuff. And I think that's so beautiful and wonderful. And I think the complexities of gender is something mm -hmm. that isn't, isn't necessarily something that comes through with my story as much, even though I feel really excited about that stuff, but don't really embody it in the same way that he does. So it's really nice to have a counter, a counterpoint to that. That's mm -hmm. also celebrated because I, I think the, the point of what I was what I want to, the messages that I want to get across with my comics is around celebrating our differences and having differences be something that's awesome and amazing and something that we can we can all kind of revel in as opposed to difference being othering or isolating or sad or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it's, I really like talking to people who've come to a good amount of terms with their identities because... For them, it shows that trans isn't always just kind of a, oh no, I'm in a terrible state of mind. 
But for some people, it's yeah. like, well, I want to explore myself in a difficult way. And, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it can be a positive thing to want to gain a certain level of identity understanding for yourself. It can be a positive thing to be trans and queer, you know. Yes, yes, definitely. It's the thing that annoys me when um, there's some of the articles I get written in the Daily Mail over here. When people are like, man trapped in a woman's body. It's like, that is an old cliche. Really, really yeah, old. Yeah, that's right. And frankly needs reinventing. You know, because there yeah. are people like you and Joe, and it's like, actually, I'm just happy like this. Yeah, that's you know, right. May not be forever, but right now I am. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, I think with any, with any sort of time that when we're, we're not showed very much in the media, that the media relies on really simple stories that are, that get used and used over and over again and that and at the moment for trans for trans people it's that trapped in the wrong body like social freak bad 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 story which is like yes our communities encounter a lot of oppression and there's a lot of violence and bullying that happen but and we're also awesome and we're also really resilient and we're also creative and 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 also happy in lots of ways as well. So I I want to offer a counter to that story, I guess. Oh, definitely. The media has a tendency to, in its more positive lights, venerate the simple rather than accept the complicated. Yeah. And, and humans are, by their definition, very complicated. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> Even the straight white cis ones have complications. You know. You know. <laughs> yes, very true. <laughs> You know, needs needs to have more of that out there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, where would you want to take Rooster Tales in the future? Just kind of keep as is, or do you want to have like overarching stories of things, or just because it's factual based, just observe and then just keep going? What, what do you want to do with Rooster Tales, really? Um, I think something that I'm a little project that I keep thinking about and coming back to is around exploring my family history. My great grandma was given the same name as me, the same girl name when we when we were both young, and we both changed it because it didn't suit either of us. And she was a wonderful kind of crazy woman who was addicted to chocolate and told outrageous stories and was kind of a mad Scottish lady. And I feel like I really want to explore how her story alongside mine and the kind of so she's my mum's mum's mum and I want to kind of explore all four all four generations of us as kind of strange strange creatures um and I think that's a that's a story that I have on the back burner that I'd like to kind of work with my mum and my grandma around and I imagine that would be something that fits in quite well with Rooster Tales at some point where I think over the last couple of years I've been kind of, I started with a very solid four panels, that's it, boom, 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 joke at the end. And <laughs> I've tried over the last couple of years, I've kind of added, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six, sometimes it's kind of three or four pages worth of comics to tell one story. So I'm really excited about playing with that, playing with the length and telling more more intricate stories as well. But I don't imagine that Rooster Tales will be the only thing that I end up doing. But it's it's a nice project to keep me to keep me drawing comics and to keep me kind of interested in developing my art and my storytelling and stuff. So who knows? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it will continue and get better. <laughs> True, true. You've done a lot of um, other comics as well, some written by some others and some by yourself, like the uh, My Friends is Superhero thing and, oh, the Anything That Loves anthology recently. I'm so looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, me too. It's a bit, I, was, I felt really honoured to be asked to be included in it. And, yeah, just a really amazing comic artist in there and I think it's going to be an incredible book. And it was really cool just to watch the Kickstarter just take off and mm-hmm. and get sort of yeah it's I think it ended so up being more than thirty thousand dollars to get it printed and ah I think it'll be great. Mm. 
Oh yeah, the Northwest Press are supposed to be like Kickstarter veterans at this point. They know what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, it's it's become the best. I think it's just become like crowdsourcing now has become like a normal way of doing. We want to do a print run of this thing that only really our fans like. Do you want to spread the yeah. word and then see if we can make some more while also seeing if we can do it? I know it's it's such a great thing. I'm I'm really hoping to get my get my shit sorted to to put together my um book that I did for my masters. I've got a 150 page comic book about queer and trans New Zealanders, and I kind of have short stories of about I think nine or ten different people across different identities and mm -hmm. different um sort of historical stories and present day stories and stuff. And I really want to get them printed, but I think that it will be a, a kind of Kickstarter number. So hopefully I can get myself sorted to find a good printer and get all the costings up and mm -hmm. see if people are interested. But well, Kickstarter seems to be the way to go to see if people are interested. I'm interested. That sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, <want that. laughs> I will retweet the hell out of that if you get that going. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> It is, it's, it's a goal of mine for in the next year to kind of sort that stuff out and mm -hmm. find find good quality printers. But I don't know anything about printing, so I'm trying to trying to learn and ask and mm -hmm. work it out. But that's, the kind of... that's the difficult thing with uh, webcomic writing, I suppose, is that it, it can be a completely new field going into getting things printed. Like, I know that... Yeah. Uh, Tab had some difficulties of going. Okay, we should do. I should use a printer in America. That's not a terrible idea. And then yeah. it just had so much disconnect and delays and communications and complications that it it just seems more worth it to use your own home printer at some point. Yeah, that's right. And the problem is that the comic that I did for the book is kind of half in color and half not in color, and I <laughs> I really don't want to just print it out in black and white. I feel really strongly that it. it that the colour is really important to it, so that kind of adds a bunch of cost to it as well. And so, but there doesn't seem to be a a good sort of publishing company within New Zealand that that's, is a right fit for wanting to publish a queer and trans colour comic book. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Small niche, so <laughs> I think Kickstarter Kickstarter is the way to go for that. Use Northwest Press. That's Zan. He's a nice guy. Yes. <laughs> totally use them. Uh, <laughs> hey, Zan. Zan, publish my book. <laughs> I'll just send little other emails going, Hey, Zan, publish his book. Do you know your name? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so you can get subliminal messages. So you can get Erica involved. Just spam him over Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or ask him nicely. He's a nice guy. I don't know. Whatever works. <laughs> there are many ways to approach it. Yes. Uh, is it? Is it? You've mentioned it before on Twitter, but is it a goal of yours to get on Strip Search? Because I, w I would love to see you on it. You know. You know, the more I watch that show, the more I feel so freaked out about it, and that I wouldn't be able to do. I would just turn up and be like, "Oh, it's too hard. I'm not good enough." <laughs> it looks like so much fun. I really, really want to do it. I hope they do a second season. I would oh. love to apply. I think that at this point they are definitely wanting to do it as well because they just have so much positive response. And I know. Um, have you seen the video from Penny Arcade Expo where they got to see it filmed live for the first time, where they showed it on a massive projector before the strip search? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they were just all so happy to see an audience enjoying and laughing at it, and they're like, "Can we do this every week? Everyone loves <laughs> this." <laughs> it's such a great. I re I've really really enjoyed the series and. <laughs> Like, just get so invested in all the characters and start crying. And, like, when Erica left I, and her little speech in the car was just, like, oh, tearing up. It was so heartbreaking. Like, yeah. And made Joe watch it and then he started crying. And it's just incredible. And, and it, it seems like the, the internet is responding really well and people are kind of – have been involved in Kickstarters – and all of their Kickstarters have been really successful as well. It mm -hmm. just feels like a just beautiful, loving kind of thing, even though it's a kind of nasty reality show. It's so great. Well, that, I love oh, it. That's the reason I love it so much is that so many, like, I do like some reality shows like Face Off and Project Runway. I, I like things that I'm yeah. interested in, you know. Face Off is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, but, but Strip Search... I don't Search, think I have Face Off. Hmm? 
Oh, I don't think I know what Face Off is. Oh, it's a special effects and makeup based reality show. Oh. Yeah, okay. they get a lot of people in to do like um, challenges around. Okay, make an underwater monster and make a costume for this thing and make something yeah, in five minutes. Yeah. Or, it, it's so weird and interesting the challenges they get going, but there is a lot of the bitching going on, and uh, it's like, eh, get back yeah. to the painting faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's so good about strip searches. There's, there's none of that. It's yeah. just everyone's like, I love you, I love you. Oh, this is great. Even Amy oh. is like the closest thing to it, going there like, okay, I'm a master strategist. Don't doubt me, people. And then the next time she's like, I love this show so much. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, my gosh. Amy is oh. amazing. Uh, I know. It's like, <sighs> Is it bad I'm still, like, hashtagging Team America, even though they're gone now? <laughs> I know, I know. It's, they're just so I awesome. I keep thinking about them. I, kill, I keep thinking that they're going to come back or something. <laughs> I need them to. <laughs> I'm hoping, like, I've seen reality shows, like, bring everyone back in for, like, a final challenge or something. And they are keeping uh, them in that hotel, yeah. so never know. Yeah. Maybe oh. Alex will get his chance to shine. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, Alex with his beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> He's done a few comics about just hanging out at the um, hanging out back at the hotel with everyone that comes off because like then they get back to the hotel and they just hang out together. Like, oh uh, right, cool. It's a cool thing. I, I listen to the Lady Ready Run podcast and so sometimes they talk about what was going on behind the scenes and there's this yeah. cool thing that when they this is such a tangent uh, when they got back to the hotel like they just try to keep them entertained for a while like the night that Lexi came back, um, yeah. she was organizing a trip for everyone to go and see the Hobbit. <laughs> oh, funny! Yeah, ah, I. They just seem to treat everyone so nicely as well. It's perfect. Yes, definitely. Uh, and yes, you should apply. There's no harm in applying, at least. Come on. I know. I know. I'll send them. I'll send them emails every day. Please <laughs> make me be on your show. <laughs> yeah. try, try and get a hashtag campaign going. You know, Sam Walton yeah. for script <laughs> Yeah. I'll start it. I'll start it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, I believe for once you don't actually have any upcoming projects to promote, so I'll just have to look forward to anything that loves coming out. So that would be yes. <laughs> I mean, because I, I've had a couple of um, kind of Kickstarter crowdfunding stuff happen this year, but they've all ended now, so I don't have anything kind of on coming up, which is kind of exciting but also kind of sad but i'm sure that in you know in the next month i'll have some new things popping up here and there i seem to keep pretty busy these days which is which is really great <laughs> must be nice to take a little break for a while <laughs> yes definitely but then get back into it <laughs> <laughs> yes awesome i'll look forward to this sunday or monday's updates um the... yeah i haven't done the comic yet so i have to think of something funny that happened this week uh, oh, and I love the last one, the one with um, oh, the wedding cake. Oh, oh, so okay. many feels. I know it's it's amazing because I I drew that one a while ago, and then I thought, oh, I may as well just pop it up on the, on the internet, and Tumblr has just taken it and run with it. It's got like really? five four thousand notes at the moment. It's mm -hmm. quite yeah. incredible. I can see you doing very well on Tumblr. They like that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I was really impressed. Like, usually I get, like, maybe ten notes, maybe three on a bad day. But this one is, like, I checked it this morning. I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. 3,000. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> by tonight it was four, over 4,000, so. Nice. Is this from, <laughs> yeah. like, an official Rooster Tales or Rooster or your um, Tumblr account or? Yeah, it came from my Tumblr account because because usually I just put a kind of promo up on my Tumblr mm -hmm. and it just has kind of click here for the actual comic. Mm -hmm. But this one, because it was just one panel, I put the whole thing up and it mm -hmm. seems to have um, struck a chord with people. So it's quite That's nice. Cool. Yeah. Hope we get some nice new traffic out of it. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, people go check out Rooster, Rooster Tales. Go check out the Tumblr as well, obviously. Uh, and follow Sam on Twitter. Um, I think it's is it Samuel Orchard on Twitter? Or I can't remember. I should know. <laughs> I don't. I think it's just Sam Orchard. <laughs> Hold on. I'll Let's see. I'll put the links below. But okay, okay, I race you to find it. Yeah. I've got a yeah, tab over. 
Sam underscore Orchard. Ah, damn it, you won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, check Sam out there. Look forward to anything that loves, um, which will be available on Northwest Press after it goes out for the Kickstarter back, as I, I presume they do that with everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and have a lovely I'd say have a lovely day have a nice sleep I suppose <laughs> yes I will you have a lovely day <laughs> so. alright